you know, these kids nowadays are so entitled. They don't want to learn. They don't want to pay attention or work hard in school. They just want to be on their phones and do whatever they want. You know where that comes from? That comes from people not understanding that young people have an inefficiency calculator built into their brain. This has to be one of the most ridiculous things about American culture. Let's pretend that m me learning something is me getting to the uh, end of that hose right there. Now, what you see is that in the traditional education system, they would tell you that you have to grab it there and just keep pulling until you get that. And that is correct. If I do that, I will eventually get to the end of that hose and I will have it. But here's the thing that I can see from standing right where I'm standing. If I just walk over there and grab it, I will get the same outcome, but I will have saved myself a whole lot of time and effort. Now, you and me might see that as efficiency, but people who are so indoctrinated toward the system that we live in will look at that and say, mm, you're cheating, you're taking a shortcut, you're being lazy. Why? How is it cheating and being lazy to achieve the same exact thing by putting in one one hundredth of the work? So this TikToker by the name of Big L points out the reality that in our system, especially when it comes to education, but more broadly this is true, Americans tend to put this overemphasis on valuing work in and of itself. Even when there are options that are obviously more efficient, that would save time, that would be easier, people who pursue options that are in fact easier are often painted as lazy even if it gets the the same thing done. Now, really, there's an underlying reason for this, and it kind of goes back to the puritanical culture in the United States, and it also ties into capitalism, because to a certain degree, there's actually a little bit of a class divide here. So if you're a working class person, there's constantly this push to work constantly, all the time. In fact, there's a saying that you might have heard if you have worked in any normal workplace across the United States, which is, if there's time to lean, there's time to clean. And it's rooted in this belief that people should just sort of constantly be working, that in order to live, you have to earn a living. You quite literally are expected to earn your existence in the world, even though, to be honest, nobody asked to be here. We're all sort of born by accident, and yet somehow we're all expected to constantly earn our own existence. Really amazing stuff. And it really is deeply rooted in this puritanical belief in like original sin and like, oh, all humans are evil and so we have to pay our debt to God by working constantly. And even people who aren't religious sort of have this culture imposed on them by the United States because it turns out that industrial capitalists really loved that facet, that one unique component within specific religious groups in the United States. They thought it was very, very useful if their factory workers had this mindset of constantly having to work all the time. And so it got embedded to the culture because ultimately it's useful for profit-seeking enterprises. But you also will notice something, that this is something that more rich folks tend to not necessarily completely agree with. In spaces of privilege, you tend to get this mindset of work smarter, not harder. And there tends to be a lot of celebration of anybody that manages to innovate their way to the point where they have to do very little work and still get the job done. And it really just speaks to the divide though that exists within our culture between capitalists and worker. Because capitalists are expected to make easy money. It's all about getting that passive income, you see? It's about owning extra property so that your money's working for you, so that you could get that sweet retirement and retire at 30. Whereas working class people are told that it's deeply shameful to not be working. And so if you're going to a standard public school, odds are, for the most part, you're getting this narrative pushed to you. They should always constantly be working and they should prove your worth and you should earn your existence. But if you're in the spaces of wealthy capitalists, they're all gonna be talking to you about passive income and about making your money work for you. And I think it's a pretty clear example of where you can see significant class divides in the United States. Now, I think the truth is somewhere in between this. I do think that we owe it to each other as human beings in society to do what we can to take care of each other. And if we lived in a morally decent society, the economy would be organized around taking care of everybody's needs so that working your normal job would basically be doing your part to take care of other people. But unfortunately, that's not where we're at. And people are sort of driven to work, especially in learning environments, they're driven to this this idea that the effort that you put in is more significant than the result. And it's all really part of an effort to just propagate this idea that working class people need to constantly be working and encouraging others to work. 
and more so than that, judging anybody around them that they perceive as not working hard enough. Because it's a heck of a lot easier for capitalists if working class people are policing each other. Which is why, in our education system, instead of focusing on exploring ideas and actually learning new things, it's mostly focused about doing the homework and memorizing the things that you're told to memorize, so that when you show up to work, you can read through the checklist, do the work on the checklist, and then follow more instruction. Because the last thing any capitalist wants is all of their workers thinking for themselves. Because if all the workers adopt the mindset of work smarter not harder, they might come to the conclusion that the smart work is unionized work.